retweet that, and then we're just gonna get this started. So, Remo, introduce yourself to everyone. Let them know uh, where you're from, when you got that, you know, that nice little drip on you. you got it. So, so my, name is, back. my name is Marco Remo. Um, I've been out of the scene for a while, but I used to compete in Call of Duty for, for like four years. Uh, the drip came from Dallas, MLG Dallas, UMG, MLG Dallas, and uh, IW era. I associate all of my uh, like life years with the years that the call of duty was going like i'll be like you know back like an iw i got my first right. car or something like that Don't so know. um but uh yeah here i am being the uh the old guy on the podcast now which is crazy to me because right. time flies oh. pretty much so uh what really inspired you to start competing like if you saw call of duty like did you just start playing pubs or were you just instantly like, I got to compete since you've been playing for a long time and, you know, you started competing in the early days, you know, way back. The underground uh, scene, you know, what started fuck. it? So I played, I played a ton of pubs just for, I mean, I played like a lot of pubs of that, pubs of Halo 3. Um, I didn't even start playing online until like Modern Warfare 2. But in Black Ops 2, I was like rolling through my like trick shotting phase. I feel like we all go through and and shit like that and i was like thinking about doing youtube whatever and then my buddy from school who i didn't even like know play he was like he started he's like you want to play like competitive headquarters was this was his thing and he was trying to get in like this hot headquarters clan it was like saw x was the name of the clan mm-hmm. still at war and it was like a bunch of like fucking like dope people yeah so i was like and like he was like he got in that clan and then it was like my whole goal was to try to get in like i needed to be like good enough to do that And so I just played competitive headquarters like over and over and over and over like all day, every day in Black Ops 2 for like the last like four months of that game's life. I played a little bit of league play and like I finally got good enough to get up into like Master Rank like once towards the end. But uh, and then in Ghosts, we ended up like forming competitive teams. Like we had like probably like 14 people on our GB page, which was wild. And like I'd just be sitting there like fucking like biting at the nails to like hope that I got picked to play GBs that night or like that someone better wasn't on. And then I eventually started playing like dubs and stuff like that in that game and and I really started following the scene. It took until the end of Ghost to go to like a local, but just from there on out, it was it was curtains. I was I was addicted. So pretty much going from the locals and stuff, what really boosted your transition to go from just the kid that plays every day after school or whatever you were doing to going to across the country or wherever you were headed to these majors and having these crazy experiences? Because that's not something that. A lot of us do. A lot of NGR kids, you know, either go to these events and that's kind of all they really experience, you know. Explain that kind of process because not many people go through it. I mean, I just have a, a twisted mind of just a competitive everything. So no matter what I do, I want to be the best at it. Like, I don't, like, there's not really anything that I do just for fun. It's like a blessing and a curse. So, and then you start playing pubs and then you move from pubs, you're like playing GBs and you're you're doing so good at GBs that you're, you're going into scrims and then you start like playing scrims and then you find like go to a LAN and then you get slapped and you get sent home and you're like, ah, shit, I'm like not that great. And then that'll like, that experience kind of like set a, set aside like, all right, these people on my team, like they don't have the same mindset. Like they got slapped, they don't want to get better. Cause like when you get like slapped around like that, you either want to, like it either makes you want to go home and practice, practice, practice so that never happens again or it makes you want to quit. So like that, like, immediately like shoved out a couple of people who, who just wanted to quit they're like i'm never going to be that good and, like i was the opposite i'm like all right we're gonna go home. and like we like got another team together and just kept slowly building until like it was to a point where like i got noticed by an organization that was willing to send me to a major with with money which was i mean we were getting funding like late funding for these locals anyways but just when i saw like that aspect when like somebody was like here's here's a team pass just go play and i like i always had money to go to these events not all my teammates did but that like that changed something when like other people started to see something in you and your team versus just like yourself. So like, it wasn't like straight delusional confidence just in yourself. It was like, all right, this cat who has money has never met me. He's going to throw $200 here. And then the next event we got 400 in the next event we were getting like hotels. And then all of a sudden jerseys are showing up in the mail and I'm getting like GP on my doorstep and shit oh, like shit. that just slowly fuels it. And it just moves into like, all right, like I'm not spending money to go to these events and stuff like that. It's by like a streaming PC, and then you like you start streaming, and then you start getting viewers, and you start throwing YouTube videos. And it's just it's a domino effect, and when you have like that competitive mind, nothing nothing will stop you. So that's like where it all just like snowballed until like I, even when I was going to majors, I was still dipping back to locals because like I just I was just addicted to it. So I'm sure you guys can agree with this point that I'm about to 
ask Rima personally, but do you think going from that transition to like, you know, just playing casually to really competing takes a weird toll on like not just your body, but your, you know, overall personal well being, you know, like your social life? Because obviously you're talking to people over a screen and it's a little bit different than, you know, human to human. So I can only imagine, not just for me, but I'm sure other people went through that weird transition and I don't know uh, how you navigate through that. So, I mean, it's to, to me, like, to make it in, in Call of Duty or, or really anything, you got to do, like, every day. It's, it's, it doesn't take any breaks. It doesn't take holidays. It, if, if you're sleeping or you're not working, someone else is. So that's just something that's a disgusting trait to have is just to think, like, if I'm sleeping right now, someone else isn't. So, like, then you lose that two hours, and then it turns into losing, like, four hours. You're down to, like, less sleep, less this. A social life, so they think like I'm going out with friends, but somebody else out there isn't. So I mean, it's 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 a miserable ladder to fall down, um, especially like if you don't make it. I mean, like I'm obviously I'm not a COD pro, so it's hard to look back on that and say that it was all worth it. To me, I personally think it was, but um, that's just because the the friends that I made in gaming are like my best friends now to this day. Like we don't like I said, a buddy came up from Columbus that was my teammate for a while. We just went golfing, we went shooting, like. We had a whole weekend together. It was, and you know, like I would have never met any of these people. So, like, while I lost like almost literally all of my friends locally because it would just get to a point where they'd be like, "You want to go out?" And I was like, "No, nah, I can't." Like, "You want to do this?" I'm like, "No, I can't." They just stopped inviting me, and then I lost connection with all of them because I was just so obsessed. And I didn't like care necessarily at the time because I was like, I'm talking to my friends eight to twelve to sixteen hours a day in Discord. It's not like I was lacking human connection and, and, and conversation and shit. But um, like when I like finally sat down and looked at it, I was like quiet like it's just, it's just alone like yeah so like you have to be willing to like make that sacrifice and not everybody you know does that shit like people will be like yeah like i love call of duty i want to go pro but like i'm in fucking college right now like i'm gonna live this party and shit and then you just like that's it and then, then that's done like i don't think that there's people out there i'm sure there's people out there that are that good at the game that they can miss like a night or two but for people like me it was if i took off a night here or there and then I got fucked up and then like I was tired for work the next day and then I could try to get on. It would just ruin, it wouldn't just take one day of practice out. It would ruin like the next day and it would take me a little bit to get back on track. So I never did that shit, but um, no, it, it's a, it's a toll. It's sacrifice. And I try not to do it with family because it's more important than anything, but uh, with yeah. friends, yeah, it's just, she was out. So I wanted to bring this up because uh, I think it's something that between the three of us, at least, uh, me, Liam, and John, have experienced a lot, especially in our AM community nowadays, is team hopping. And uh, Mark, obviously, you and Matt, I've known you guys forever, and you guys have stuck through thick and thin throughout roster changes, no matter what. You guys are always there. So what, A, what's it like to have a proper duo? Like, duo gets thrown around so easily nowadays. So what's it like having a proper duo, and how do you, like, make that? connection with kids in the community that's a tough one um it's weird because i never once i started competing and i got past the, like the first like two little locals i went to i didn't like team hop i was either on sdx or i was on uh havoc for events like i went to one event a little like random event with uh reborn knights at the time but um it was always like me and mateus me and tino um like Keeper was in the mix. Uh, we'd like maybe have like a random fourth or something like that, like Hippo or Damien or Shoddy, whatever. But yeah, me and Mateus stuck together and it was it was like a, a twist of fate that he knew like Alpha at the time. We were going from AW into Black Ops 3 as the 18 plus rule. So we got rid of our player Tino who wasn't 18 and we just happened to pick up Slick on like a whim. And like at first we didn't get along at all. Like he was very immature to, and I'll tell you all this too, he was very immature to the competing aspects he was only really just playing with friends and stuff like that so he didn't know how to like be that good teammate so it was like difficult and it was just it was like one twist of fate that like i was really bad online in black ops 3 we go to the first lan i performed spectacularly and then on like the plane ride home slick and uh and hippo talked about dropping me like on the plane ride even though at the event they said like we were all going to be like cool and like stick it out as a team and then when we got home, Mateus changed his mind last minute. And was like, I'm sticking with I'm sticking with Remo. And then from there on out, it was it was just like I saw something in Matt. Like as he matured as a player, and he saw something with me. So it's just it's just something that like it's nice having other players on the same page and like 
and like every now and again we would split up on you know like our, our views and stuff like that and and we get into little arguments but it was it was just nice knowing that like no matter what like if everybody left the team it wasn't just like me looking for three it was like always just me and him looking for two or or like three of us looking for one or like once nick got on there it was like me nick and mateus no matter what so and, and again like we got along really well too so that helps a lot like in and out of game um do I think it's necessary? Like, no, but it makes it a little bit easier to get on and do everything every day when you have someone else doing it with you, making the same sacrifices and, and, and doing all that shit. Um, yeah. So, I like for sure, I saying, for sure get that. Oh, shit, go ahead, man. No, no, you got it. You know, you good, you good. I was going to say, uh, like you were saying, talking about the in and out of game, what makes a teammate really enjoyable to have like you were saying, both in and out of game, because obviously there's a lot of factors that go into it, but if you were to sit down and create, like, your ideal teammate, like, what would that be? I mean, ideal teammate starts with the game. Like, uh, like I didn't get into Call of Duty, like, competitive, like, to, to, to make friends necessarily. I knew that it was, it was just going to inevitably happen, but I wasn't, like, I was never one to just team with a friend because it was a friend. I knew that like it's business first. So, um, like just knowing that somebody has the exact long term goals as you, like what they want to do with Call of Duty, knowing um, just the way that they handle themselves on a day to day situation, like they're on time for scrims and and they're giving all their effort and shit like that always came first. So if if like me and Mateus weren't as close as we were outside a game, it wouldn't have mattered because we were just so like on the same page in game. And then, I mean, the icing on top, having your players outside of the game that you can just talk to about, like, any issues you're having, like, hey, I'm feeling really bad, me and my girlfriend just broke up, like, I'm not going to be straight for a little bit, and then, like, you guys can talk about it, and, like, if you had a bad scrim, like, you would know what was going on, and be like, all right, let's call it early tonight, something like that, just so you have someone else to have your back and know what's going on, or family problems, or anything like that. So that's important, and then just the way that we gelled on, like, our humor and shit, like, our, our team chats were always just very upbeat, it was never dry, it was like, like every day... Even if it wasn't talking about COD all day, it was like we were still communicating and talking and, and, and just learning about, you know, like everything that's going on in each other's lives. So we knew like that dude just worked like a double today. Like he's probably gonna be a little tired tonight. Let's let's try to like maybe let's not scrim, maybe let's or maybe let's not play that tournament, maybe let's scrim or something. So when you start getting and then like we would hang out outside of Call of Duty too, which was just something else that like and you knew too, because like we'd be hanging out at like a music festival and then in the middle of the music festival we'd be like I can't wait to go home and play COD. Like, weird shit like that. You just know, like, you just have that same mentality. So getting along with them, too, helps because it, it cuts down your arguments and, and it makes you, like, you start respecting that player, too. You start respecting him as a person. So, like, even if you think he's fucking dead wrong with what he said, you sit down and you respect his opinion and you move forward better. Your communication gets better. You know, everything. Everything just it just seems to click a little bit better when you're, when you're cool with them in and out of game. Yeah, does anyone else have any opinions on that kind of stuff? Uh, well, he made a good point. He was talking about, like, how the people he played with, if, you know, if his team has actually wanted to get on and do, like, the small stuff. Like, for me personally, I've never, like, competed, like, uh, like, 18 plus, like, an 18 plus scene for majors and all that stuff. For me personally, it was a lot more on the local scene. So I don't know about your experience, but for me personally, I didn't actually have a lot of teammates who wanted to do the small stuff. Like at most, it was really scrims. Like I was always there was like probably like a handful of people throughout like my entire time playing Call of Duty, which is like it goes back all the way to like Ghosts who actually wanted to sit down and do the small stuff. And me personally, I always found that fun. I always wanted to try to like go into games and, and figure out strats. But like to my teammates, and I'm sure all of you guys can relate to this. It ended up like 15, 20 minutes in. It just ended up to everyone like shooting each other, killing each other, team killing, and like you know. But um, I don't know. I was just curious to you, someone who actually competed and. Um, at the major level, like did that stuff still happen a lot with you. We, it was, it was competitive outside of game two. Like, like I would, I would go to sleep, and I would wake up and like, Mateus would be like, "Yo, like after we got off last night, I threw fifty uplink balls," and I was like, "Holy shit!" Like you sat there and just like worked on your throws, and he was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "I'm gonna do fucking sixty uplink throws tonight," and I'm not gonna tell him. And then like I'd send that in the chat, he'd be like, "Psych, I did seventy five and it was like. All right, this dude's doing 75 all playing throws. I'm going to do 100 all And it was like little stuff like that. So, and then you'd start doing like the shit, like, all right, we're all going to get out at five o'clock to scrim. And then, like, I'd sit down on my computer at 4 15 and look at like my chat or like the screen and be like, oh, Mateus is shooting bots already. Like, he's probably been on for like the past fucking half an hour. Like, I need to start getting on earlier to, to shoot bots. And, 
or like uh like i'd just be like i'd get off of scrims and i go to lay down in bed and like he'd send me like a stream like be like hey this dude's running main ar you should watch it he's doing some pretty cool shit and i ran main ar so like he was even looking out for me so much and it helps too when like um like i worked 40 hours a week right out of high school sometimes more some nights and stuff too and i'd hop on after so like i didn't have all the time in the world to like sit down and and he was just going to school so like sometimes he'd have like a short day like three classes and then he'd get home from like noon until midnight and i'd get home from work at four he'd have four hours on me so he did the work for both of us which was just something like you don't always see and did i mean for the whole team too but when you start you know you get at those higher levels and you want all that shit to work like you'll start to see who who's about it and who's not who puts in that little bit of extra time it isn't just on during your your six hour scrim window and gets off right away and then is out the door or whatever I mean, we'd have team long conversations for hours afterwards. Like, scrims went really bad. And like, what the fuck's going on? Like, Marco, you got shit on today. What's going on? I'd be like, I don't know. Like, my thumbs weren't working. Like, well, I saw you were like, you were getting like, uh, you know, you're getting caught in sprint. Like, is your timing off? I'm like, yeah, maybe I wasn't looking at the clock. Like, all right, let's start cl- calling out the clock time, like all four of us, so we know that like, not just our main AR who's going to rotate first needs to focus on that shit. He might be in a gunfight or something. Like, it's all call out like 20 seconds on the clock, and then. They started doing that, and I wasn't getting, you know, caught sprinting on, on the rotation as a main AR. And so, just being able to discuss what was going on in like a positive mindset changes everything to me. Instead of like, like getting off and like, you know, Remo got shit on tonight. Like maybe we should start looking for a replacement. It was like, why was Remo getting shit on? Was one of us not playing our roles right? Was he having an off day? Was his internet shit in the bed? Like, and, and you you kind of talk through those problems and work through them a little different, um, which is just. And it's not just like going to majors and, and, and like uh, 18 plus teams. It's just, it just goes with like the right mentalities. I don't know like a ton of other teams that did that. I would even sit down with the, when IW first came out and I went through all the maps and I made call outs on Photoshop on all of the, uh, like I'd have them up and I sent them to my team. And I was like, here's the call outs for all the new maps. Like, I don't expect you to learn all of them, but like at least we know like this is this truck, this is this building. And we would like, I'd have it up on another monitor. Like I'd die and I'd look over quick and I'd be like, he's, he's top green bricks. And then, it was shit like that would catch on. So like just the right. and I, I did that when I was unemployed too and IW came out. I was like laid off in the winter, so I had the time to do it. My teammates didn't. I stepped up in that off time to to do shit like that. So it's a, it's a difference maker for sure. Yeah, no, that's 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 lucky, man. I mean, like finding people like that is really is like an actual blessing, especially in a community like this. Like that's so hard. Like I really, I think I found like two people like that. You know, I, I've had like so many talented teammates before, but like ones who actually want to sit down and like go through the small stuff and do stuff like that, like actually treat it like a job. And like, that's hard to find. Cool. That's the thing. Yeah. And, uh, well, I was going to say, I was going to say two things. So one, I think it's funny that you bring up the college thing. Cause John, when he first picked MW back up, I remember it was our first scrim, Bro, first map. He would die and he would wait out his kill cam. Cause he'd be looking down on a map. He printed out of yeah, the call. Bro. I, I printed them out and now like pieces of paper and circled the hard points and wrote, you know, which hard point it was. But, uh, it's, it's but I, I, what uh, Liam was saying about, like, just kids in our community and just finding the right ones, like, it's weird because it really is not always your most naturally gifted players that want it that bad. Like, I don't mean to put them on blast, but, like, I talk to John about it all the time. Uh Chaz, one of our teammates, like he was just naturally gifted, but he just never really wanted to do the extra stuff. He never, he never got on extra early to shoot bots. He never stayed on afterwards to shoot bots. He was always like, First like, one off. I, like, like, like I, I'm good enough. Like I don't need to do this extra stuff. Meanwhile, and he'd sit there and complain about like John and Ryan, but John and Ryan would sit in a Discord for like an extra hour and a half after scrims to shoot bots. After Chaz got off because we were losing scrims. I was see. I'm not that naturally gifted player. It was like I played Call of Duty for like three to four years, and I can only sit down and like really attest to say like during like this maybe like six to eight month block that I feel like I was actually like a really good individual Call of Duty player, and that was when I like didn't have any distractions. I wasn't working, and I put in like more time than I already was because that's what it takes. And then at that point, I could hang with anybody who was that naturally gifted. Um, but I also always had like this out of game stuff that I'd been practicing. So it all, it all came together at once and every naturally gifted call of duty player that I've ever seen who doesn't fucking work on shit, uh, like anything else besides just being really good when they get on playing is nowhere right now because they just don't exist. You don't have anybody who just hops on and shoots straight and gets off like this. It, it, it doesn't take you anywhere. 
unfortunately. It's just, I mean, you don't have to have all of it. You don't have to have the networking and the gun skill and the in-game knowledge and the out-of-game knowledge and the vibes and the, and the schedule and everything. You don't need to have all of it, but you can't just you can't just have like one piece of the puzzle. Like the, the more you have, the you have a better shot at making it. It's just your eyes just go up, and then you try to work around teammates who are who have like your weaknesses. Like like I wasn't like the craziest fucking slayer. That was Mateus. Like Mateus would fucking go off every game. I just had to worry about just getting my getting my rotations and, and getting my one on one kills because I knew Mateus was going to pop that two piece when I couldn't. And we would have somebody who was like smart with objectives, so that like he knows like I I know my job. I'm selfless. I'm going to get in that bomb site. I'm going to put down the bomb. I'm going to die, and I'm going to trust Mateus Remo to, to get my trade. When you start getting teammates that are gelling like that, you know, if who recognize that they don't have those strengths and weaknesses, you start to put together a pretty solid team that way. It'll only take you so far, too. Like, I, there's no Call of Duty teams that rose to the top as a team besides E6 back in AW yeah. in my entire <laughs> career that I've seen that as a team, they took it all the way to the top. It's just been individual players or two players at a time that kind of broke in. Like, you had, like, you Christine and Arcee's twins, they broke in, and then you have, like, these individual players that make it up through their individual skill, but you never see a whole team, so you kind of got to, like, recognize, like, even though, like, my weakness is I don't you know, do the extra sh- or like uh, my weakness in game is I, I'm not like a really big kill player and I'm okay with dropping like shitty numbers. Like you still got to work on like getting your, like your gun up. Cause like, right. there's going to be a time where like, maybe that person quits and you can't find someone to fill that shit in. And now all of a sudden you're shitty too. Like it's going to take you being the best at everything. You just got to know like what your strength and weaknesses are. So you can pick your role and then kind of base it off that. And you just work on that stuff on the side. You focus, you you triple down on your strengths and you do that all the way around, and it makes a good team. And then while everything's working that way, you're like, all right, like I got really good at this. Now let's start working on this. Don't let this fall too much. All right, bring bring a third one up. Don't let either of these two fall because you just got that going. And that just takes time and months, if not years, to really perfect and get all of your your stat levels up at the same time without letting them all, without letting one of them slip or something. And there's too many variables that go into it, and that's that's the hardest part. Is 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 uh is dealing with the unknowns and curveballs that they could throw at you like so and so. I just got a really good job. I'm not going to play Call of Duty anymore. You're like, oh fuck, there goes my anchor. The fuck are we going to do? Try to find another AR, and then you go through two or three ARs, and their communication's bad, or they don't get on it. And and then like while that shit's happening, you're getting demoralized. So your fucking other shit that you've been working on is falling. It's, it's such a juggling act, but um, that's let me take on that. So you touched on the roles of like in game, and you know, really trying to find the puzzle pieces and how they really mesh together and you know like you said identifying your weaknesses and strengths but what kind of roles do you think there could be and this goes for all of you i want to hear your opinions what kind of roles do you think there should be for players in a sense of outside of the game so there's a lot of ways that you can add value to a team rather than you know just being a good player and being good vibes for instance uh if you have a player that you know streams or for instance you know creates youtube videos then you know they're bringing a lot of eyes to your team and for a lot of teams they can be super nasty but just no one knows about them because no one's broadcasting it no one's sharing that gameplay so what kind of roles do you think there could also be rather than just you know an anchor oh uh, i can start this one off so because me and mark were talking about just the other day um we were talking about like getting to that next step and it's like developing as a player is one thing and then developing outside of the game is another thing like he was like he was basically talking about how like once you get higher up the more and more serious you got to take like talking to orgs like making your twitter more professional like he gets on me he gets so mad at me when i do like the black header and black profile picture act all depressed and all that stupid shit but uh like, I was talking to him, I was like, dude, like, I suck when it comes to, like, talking to people in a sense of, like, negotiations. I'm a very, like, pushover person. You'd be like, here's my offer. I'll be like, okay, I'm not going to try and push for anything else. So I think, um, I think having somebody who has at least common knowledge or has a decent skill of, like, being able to bargain for better deals, um, like, I think he can correct me, but I think one of the examples he said was like, what if one of your guys has to like has to have his hotel fully paid for, but the org only offers you half paid hotels? Like, you got to find a way to either push it up or are you just going to leave that org and just pray that another org comes around for it? So, yeah, I'll tell the story that I told uh, Trips the other night about like networking. That was always one of my 
so like you have to <clears throat> to me you have to like I said build your build your team around like strengths and weaknesses. If you have somebody who's working and going to school and playing Call of Duty, like he's not gonna like focus on a lot of that outside shit. And you don't need four people trying to talk to organizations and get shit going. So that was that was always me as the player. I I always talked to the organizations. I always brought the funding to my players, and you know I always made sure that like I was one step ahead on that shit. So like the biggest ex- and it's it's the littlest things that like nobody thinks about. So I was at IW Vegas and um, I had talked to you know a couple of photographers that were good friends and made sure that like we got some of our pictures taken. I talked to other organization owners that were gonna be there to make sure that I can like connect with them in person, make sure that I shook their hand and like showed my face instead of just my Twitter Abby. And um, I made sure I talked to other players too that were doing really well and just you know standing behind them and like tapping them on the shoulder like hey you had a really good game. So when they turned around they saw my face like oh he actually watched our games like that's pretty cool. So there was an organization owner that was pretty cool with. I talked to him a lot. He had watched our team scrims. He had his own team there. I walked up behind him. He, he was watching his own team play, and, and like in the nicest way possible, I was telling him what was going to happen before it happened. Because I was, I was playing so much of that game, I just kind of knew. So I'm watching, and I'm watching the hard point timer. And I pointed at his one player. I'm like, that guy on your team, he just rotated late. He's about to get killed from cut. And like a second later, that happened. And the dude looked at me like I was a like, god. He's like, how the fuck did you know? I was like, play enough Call of Duty. And then I'd be like, the hill popped and they already got two there. And this player's behind him. He's going to get the two piece and break the hill and flip the spawns. And then that would happen. And so he was like fucking blown away. And then I was like, hey, good luck with your team. And walked away. I ran into him again a little later, had a good conversation with him, walked over to Starbucks with him. And I bought his drink. And, and that was it. I just paid for his like $4 French, you know, whatever the fuck. And it like blew him back. He's like, oh, you didn't have to do that. And by the time I got home, like I think before I even got home, I already had like a text like, hey, I'm going to drop my team. Like, I'd like to pick you guys up for the next event. I'll give you everything they had and more. It was just mind-blowing the little things you could do while everyone else was like fucking around getting drunk in their hotel rooms. I was I was mingling around with sponsors and organization owners and, and just kind of doing a little bit different connecting than the rest. And it got me as far as, like I always, I never went to an event unfunded my entire career, even with the bad placings I had sprinkled in there. It was always like, I always just knew how to talk and convince it. That's just like a different, it doesn't have to be everyone on the team, but that's just a skill that you should work on regardless. Like even if you're in person, you weren't that person to set up the organization, you meet your organization owner, you shake their hand, you, you try to at least sit down with them to have like a team meal and, and you let them know like, Hey, like I'm your player, like you're giving me money. Here's my respect back for you. Like, thank you for dumping $800 on this team out of your own account. Cause I know that you don't have the sponsors to do that yet. This was out of your hard earned money. And you have fucking kids and stuff too. You could be, and you're, and you're, and you're spending it on me playing Call of Duty in Vegas, getting double first round or whatever the case may be. But at least like, like the next time they're like, that guy was at least appreciative. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to do this for him because I like him as a, as a player. And that, and that like rolled over to my streaming too. Like once I was done competing, all these organization owners that I had worked for, worked for, or worked with, or talked to, I had offers for streams like left and right. So it just set me up for the future, you know, a little bit better because you know at least. Not everybody can be the Call of Duty pro. So you want to like network yourself so that if you really love doing this and you want to be in the game community, it doesn't end it when you, you know, you didn't make it as a player because there's coach spots and there's manager spots and there's streaming spots and there's YouTube spots and there's sponsorship deals spots and accountant spots and organization owner spots. And you want to know as many people as you can so that when that shit fizzles out, you're like, all right, I wasn't good enough, but I still want to be in this scene because I love it. Where do I go next? And you don't want to maybe rely on streaming because you don't think you're the greatest streamer. You don't want to rely on YouTube because you don't know what the fuck you're doing and you're like, oh shit, this team needs a, a manager and I played Call of Duty for four years and I know that guy. Now all of a sudden you have other oh, other doors open that you weren't even thinking about back then. You just were just doing as much as you could. So um, yeah, just having somebody who's who's going to be doing that little shit outside just based off like time. Like it, it's, it, it's all about time management. So if you have the most time, you need to be doing the most stuff. You need to be pulling up the VODs and watching them. You need to be going through your old videos and be like, Hey, like while you were at work, I watched your point of view on this map and here's a couple pointers I have for you in like a really respectful, nice way. And that way you're, you're doing what that guy should have been doing that he doesn't have time for. You're watching his VOD for him, which everyone should watch their own VODs because you get such a better perspective, like hindsight's 2020. So you get such a better perspective on all the shit that you do, but like it kind of boils down to like, all right, we have six hours of practice slot tonight. We need to take all six hours, not take four hours to practice and two hours for a remote to catch up on his vibes because he was at work. Let me do that shit for him. Yeah, when Colby and I were teaming, see, like you were just saying, when, for instance, if I was at work, even though at my job, I sit there and, like, I watch my own VODs at work. But 
when I would be at work or someone else would be doing whatever, we would have our coach or even Chaz would go down and write a whole document of all the things we did. Colby, I think, did it. Uh, I don't know if he typed it out. I think so. I don't know. Did it for a while. Chaz did it like when we first were teaming. And then the second time we were teaming, we had a coach, except for he was more of like a, a analyst. And so he's trying to be an uh, analyst for the CDL. So he left us. Um, and so I kind of picked up the role of like typing out what was going on because it was, there's two different ways it was happening. There was Chaz's way, which was kind of the harsher, like, hey, you fucked up. Don't do it again. And then you had my way where it was, Hey, this is what you did wrong. This is what should have happened. Um, and even then, like I remember, I tell John this all the time. Like we, he'd be off at work, and like I'd watch, I'd be watching mini map vods. Uh, and like I'd really focus on John and Ryan because they were the two newest players in terms of like modern warfare experience, and I probably had the best game sense on the team. So it put me in the right spot to do that for him, and you just sit there and you'd like see him make a mistake. And I told John, I was like, Hey, when you're home, get on cord. I got some stuff to show you like some spots where you messed up and Chaz would jump in the cord too, which like didn't really bother us. And like, I'd be like talking and he would just be like, see, he was, he was like, you see John, you made the wrong play right there. Watch me make the right play. But it's two completely different roles, two completely different play styles. Um, and so after a while, it kind of – it makes it hard to keep on doing it, but it also makes it somewhat – brings you somewhat satisfaction knowing that you're not the shithead in the situation, I guess you could say, and being the right person and being the right teammate. And, it I mean, whenever whenever I corrected John or anything, he never made the mistake again. Whenever Chaz would scream at him, he would do it 20 more times. I mean, to me, to me, there's everything. Yeah, it's – so important to like because i used to i had a teammate like that too back in, in black ops 3 and I was, I was working a ton and i didn't have the time to do the extras but they did and like i would be getting like i'd be doing pretty bad and I didn't have to, no one like ran over shit with me and told me what i was really doing wrong so i just kept making the mistakes but like I, like one time i got on like an hour before everybody else and i was getting ready to practice a little bit and like that, that dude hopped on the call and he just like went off on me the one day he's like i just want you to know that when you're the one to be one in S D. I set my controller down. And I know that we already lost that round, and I was like, <sighs> it's just, it's just, "It just gets in your head." And you're like, "What the fuck?" So every time I'm in a one v one S and D, I'm like, "Well, this round's fucking chalk. Like that dude's right. I fucking blow." So I mean, like, not every player is gonna be like is gonna take criticism the same way. So if you have somebody who's like, like I was way over sensitive. Um, so like, if someone like fucking yelled at me, I didn't like it. Didn't make me play better. I wasn't like, I don't want to get yelled at again. So I'm gonna be the best. It was like. He yelled at me because yeah. I didn't rotate. And then I'm like, gosh, I didn't rotate again. Like, he's fucking right. So it's just the way that you approach somebody. And, like, if you do it at the right times, too, like, everybody's emotional and they're, they're putting a lot into it and they're sacrificing a ton. So if you're fucking up, you're wasting three other people's times. So, like, if you have a bad game and, like, everybody's in a really bad mindset, the first thing after that game is you don't want to, like, go off immediately and, and start calling people out because you're not going to do it the way that you should. You're going to be like, why the fuck are we doing this? Or why the fuck are we shooting back? You're going to come off so much angrier than you should be. And someone's going to be more upset than the next guy. So it's kind of like, all right, like we had some bad, some bad games. Let's, let's, let's call it for the night. And then a couple hours later, you can, you can message that person individually. Like, and like I said earlier, just, just work through it and figure out like what was going wrong for that guy. But there's just, there's a lot of emotions that fly and, and shit that gets said and that like, gets apologized for. And it just doesn't have to happen at all. Bring down because like the second you lose a, a couple like a couple screams in a row and you're screaming at each other, it's done. Like you're you're not pulling yourself back out of that when you're screaming at each other. So so why do that? And it's, it's just it boils down to like complaining too. Like if I'm screaming and, and and the connection's bad, like I'm I'm working through it. Maybe I'm not doing it as, as good as I should, but the fucking Tweedledum is 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 like I'm one barring and these kids are and he's screaming and he's getting dicked on. I'm like, well he ain't he's lost full. He's not coming back from this. Like yeah, you get nothing well, done with that type of stuff, you know. It's it's so like then you start and like I'm always under the philosophy of like I want to practice under the worst conditions for the most part, like within reason I want to maybe not have that host for the scrims and I want I want my internet to skip and shit and I want like some loud shit to happen in the background that takes my attention away because 
when I, I'm like a good connection and like everything's going right, like I'm going to be way better because now all of a sudden like I'm getting all my frames and, and, and like I can, I can not sprint freeze and, and go back like little shit, just everything's going to start working out. And you don't want to always practice under those conditions, but you want to have those every now and again. It just makes you a little bit better. So I was always, I was always wanting to be like, all right, we have a bad host. Sweet. Let's, let's work on my shot. So I hit that extra bullet every time I, I don't stop shooting earlier or whatever, whatever the case may be. Just, I mean, even before like land events, I'd be playing a little bit of music in the, in my headset, just real low, but enough that it would be like the exact same thing as like the announcers going and the stage goes off because optic just won round 11. And then six people are behind you screaming at you because they're friends on the other team. Like you don't prepare for you want to have at least a little bit of a, of a, of a grasp on like what it's like to have outside noise. So it's little shit like that. I think takes it, a long way. I think it really all boils down to personal awareness and knowing, like we were saying earlier, what you're good at and what you're bad at. And I feel like it it's something kind of cliche and also kind of cringe to talk about. But um, there's a wave, and I don't know if it's kind of fading out or what, but a lot of people were talking about the powers of journaling. You know, personally, I think it's great. I have a bullet journal right here. This is The Atomic Habits by James Clear. I would suggest that book to anyone watching this, all three of you. Atomic Habits, like I said, by James Clear great book and one of the first things he talks about is making one percent changes and you know they took the british cycling team i said this in the last one but they took that and went from literally the worst cycling team out to one of the best and i feel like when you really t sit down and write down all your flaws write down what you're good at and really just figure out what is going on get a little sense of mindfulness and be present with the moment you can really improve as a player but a lot of people are just like oh yeah i'm just gonna get on and do this they don't take the time and sit down and literally write down page for page the things that they need to improve on because when you see it visually it really does spark a different connection in your brain so do you guys think that that's kind of a, a move that people could really do to en enhance their game is just a, you know personal little thing a little journal kind of I think I think it's a lot of small stuff like that, man. Like I mean, there's a bunch of different things. Um, I remember watching a video. I, f I forgot exactly who, but it was something about taking sticky notes. And uh, when you wake up in the morning, put it on your bedroom door and just you know whether it's like, oh, I have to get better at this, so work out or something, you know, or like I'm going to achieve this. You know, it's like the small stuff. Just so you, you know, you're always seeing it and it's always in your head. You know, like if you know if you're gonna play Call of Duty in the morning, just take your monitor, put a sticky note on it. You know, I'm going to win the next local you know and like that those small stuff like like john said you know it sounds corny but it really does help you because it puts you in a different mentality which can help you a lot so what do you think? i'm gonna say it takes it, that little stuff matters but it's i'm trying to word this properly um if you want to win and you want to succeed and you want to be the best you'll do that stuff without having to be told to do that stuff. Like, right. You're not going to take someone on your team who's, who's freaking out about this and that to like, Hey, Hey buddy, why don't you, why don't you write Sticks down your thoughts? Yeah. Guys. Right. <laughs> on your monitor the next morning, man. Like let's yeah. talk about how you're feeling tonight. Like that dude's going to be like, fuck this. He, you know, like if you're, if you want it that bad, you'll subconsciously do that. You'll go into the next game in your head over and over again and be like, I'm going to, I'm going to aim for the head. I'm going to aim for the head. I'm going to aim for the head. I'm shooting too low. I'm getting too many luck. And you're going to do stuff like that or like you're going to write down stuff at school the next day or you're going to you're going to pull up that stream by yourself and so i don't think that i don't think you could take a failing cod player and tell him to do stuff like that because he's already if he's already failing and he's not doing that little shit, like then that's it like that mindset's chalk and it's, it's hard to say that about people but it's just it's hard like to change someone's mindset but yeah you're, you're thinking like like there's how many call of duty pros have there been like there's like a, a fucking big list of original pros, and then there's a small list of people, new people who came in. It's probably like a less acceptance rate, percentage-wise, maybe than, like I mean, it's like going from like any kind of sports too. Like you got some fucking dude in high school who wants to be a professional NFL player. He's going to do everything it takes, but the acceptance rate is so little. It takes a certain person. It takes that athlete wanting to go to practice early and practice in the off season and and rewatch game footage and shit like that. Like you can't teach that it's it's just in, like you got to have it or you don't and and if i think there are certain people that might be struggling with it who want to get better and they're just they don't know how to put it all together so yeah that could help them 
so you have to find that player that, who has that mindset of wanting to get better is what it boils down to to me. Like, like I, I might want to be the best and I just don't know where to go. I'm, I'm naive. I'm young. I haven't had any experience. I don't know. I don't know what to do. This is going wrong. This is going wrong. This is going wrong. And like you said, like, let's slow down. Let, let's work on this. And we're going to get that one up. And like I said earlier, then we're going to get the other one up. Don't forget about this one. Cause it's still there. It's still important. We're going to so we keep working on that little shit. So, I mean, I, I personally love journaling and shit like that. I have to leave sticky notes where I forget stupid shit all the time in real life. I don't like call of duty. Just, you get busy like shit like life is moving on behind you while you're playing call of duty so don't don't think that, that you're not just gonna overlook things or forget to do something that day so yeah all that stuff matters so it also it also feels like you're actually getting stuff done like more like you know if you're let's say you were to do three things in a day right and i know like i mean i'm sure you guys can relate too but if you're actually like going somewhere and checking something off like man like you feel way more productive and it helps you want to do more things in the day because like Let's say I took out the trash, or I did this in a Call of Duty, you know, or and then I worked out, right? And then I checked them all off, right? It, it genuinely, because I can speak from experience, because I do this, I don't write it down. I do it on like my phone. I feel like honestly, writing it down will probably be even more like beneficial because I'm doing more of like an actual like you know action to do it. But you know, it makes me want to get up in the morning and you know do more, or you know at least meet the standards that I met the day before. And it's you know, yeah. I mean, I got I got two things. Number one. People love average. They always will love average. They'll always be content. There'll always be those people that are content with what they're doing or they think they're doing enough and they're not. That's a shitty mindset to have. Don't love average. Don't get comfortable. Always push yourself. But um, number two, when you start setting these goals and stuff like that, you're going to realize two things. You're going to realize, one, I got there way quicker than I thought I was going to. And two, I set that goal way too small. Right, yeah, for and then, sure. And then you're going you're gonna to set the next goal. It's going to be a little bit bigger. This is streaming. Like, I need to get 10 followers on my stream. And then, like, a week in, you're like, shit, I got 10 fucking followers already. All right, fuck that. We're going to get 50 followers. And then you're going to hit that shit quick. And you'll be like, in no time. But time just flies. And you're going to be like, I should have set it bigger. I should have, you know. And that's that's such a another domino effect to literally, like, write that shit down. Like, here's my goal. And start small. By all means, don't go fucking crazy. Don't be like, I want 100 subscribers by the end of the month on Twitch. And then... Right be demoralized when that doesn't happen because there's psychology in that too um just be like a little above realistic and just be like i can realistically probably get 15 but like let's go for 20 and just see if i can push myself and and that'll all all fall into place and, and you know sit back and you'll be like can't believe how fast that happened and i can't believe i set my goals so small and then before you know it your goals are fucking and keep your old ones too keep that shit and be like oh shit like six months ago my, my goal was 25 i'm at 250 look at that shit mom i made it <laughs> so speaking on uh getting comfortable with average i wanted to ask um because we talk about this a lot and marco as you know well enough for dealing with me for the past four years off season is probably my biggest weakness i uh, i stopped shooting i don't stream at all i don't go back and watch old vods or anything so what for your casual am like or not casual but like aspiring pro like us three what are your three biggest off-season tips? We'll say post-champs. Post-champs. Number one, and most importantly, off-season is your time to fuck off a little bit. So, um, like, there's nothing super active that you can, like, really be working on that's going to matter, right? Like, you're not going to be scrimming the new game. So, like, you're not working on new strats and stuff. And, and like, stuff changes. You could be big chilling right after champs and then there's an announcement of 5v5 and it throws everything that you were working on off like you had like the four guys but now you gotta find a fifth but so like number one like don't don't just fucking sit in your chair again for like 14 hours a day this is your time to 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 go out with those friends when you can and make those memories so that when you're all done playing cod whether it's in a year or 10 years after you made it pro you don't have to sit back and be like i really regret not doing this and like i really wish that i kept up with this. so so don't let don't leave yourself with any regret for anything just just make sure you still focus on that shit but like t take a day or two off a week now like let's relax a little bit and um and i guess number two is just keep up with your networking even if you already have a team like start getting shit together for, for the next game play play the existing game play the previous games enter those tournaments and and just have a little bit more fun with the game that there's no pressure play with people who you weren't playing with before because you were dedicating your full eight hour block of playing per day to your three teammates or four teammates play with a couple other people and get some insight from them and see who like might be a really good player if, if it does go 5v5 or who 
who might be a really good player if one of your players falls off in the next game or decides to quit or something like just make those connections again be like oh should i never play with so-and-so he's actually really good like and we follow him and make friends with him and stuff like that. I and mean, like, who knows? Like, maybe your fucking team's snakes and they, and they drop you and then right before the game and you're fucking scurrying. But since you played eights or you played tens, you know two or three other people already who are like, we need one more for our team. So just like keeping that networking up and still playing with people and letting them know that like I'm, I'm out here and, and you get to expand out of just your inner circle and shit like that. Like, that's important. And uh, number three, I don't know. And in no particular order either, I guess. Um, like, I just continue to, to keep my routine and, and not let that break. So I just, just still try to, like, like, I don't want to get sloppy. I don't want to, I don't want to, like, start sleeping in every day or something like that. Like, if I don't have to or, or, or like, fucking up my sleep schedule or I just want to take that time to, like, get everything healthy, too. If you're, if you've, like, been eating like shit or sleeping like shit like let's let's fix that while that's the focus now and like still still playing caught on the side so i uh, just fix fix that out of, uh, all that out of game shit that's been falling apart while you've been you know working on working on your game fix that out of game stuff fix your relationships and and just try to get some balance going in the next game you know if you can continue to watch streams like if there's betas and stuff like that play that stuff and but uh yeah just Little, little out of game shit. While you're still, while you're still playing the game, and if you've been streaming, continue to stream so you don't lose that following. And and same with YouTube and shit. Because the, the hardest thing to do is to take a break from streaming and come back. That never, those followings never come back. So I would just continue to do all those little things, just with a little less pressure. Focus on yourself a little bit. Yeah, those are pretty much the three things that I've been pushing. So I'm glad that you pretty much like every single thing that you said. I was just. Yeah, I feel like I said that in my video or we talked about it on the podcast last episode. And I don't know if you watched last episode, but Liam and Colby and I were talking about just the fact that you can get away with being super unhealthy in this esport. And it's like in no other sports like football or basketball, do you see these professional athletes waking up at 3 p.m. and rolling over, beating their dick and then deciding to just turn on that toy? Like, no, they wake up, they have their routine uh so what do you think are some of the habits that gamers specifically should in implement into their routines during this off season so that way when they are competing they aren't just waking up every day and immediately getting their brain fried like you know there is a sense of i'm a human being um it's different for everybody because this is now like rolling into like health and everybody's a little different like i was a uh... I was a player who was drinking like six tall sugary Arnold Palmers per day while I was playing and like eating chips and dip as my meal. And then like, I didn't even want to like break for dinner. Um, so like your diet, I think is just kind of important. Like it's all like schedules, the biggest thing, like, like, uh, and it's how it rolls in the real world too. Like you're, you're up for work at a certain time, you go to work, you, you take your breaks at certain times, you're, you're eating and drinking at the same times and you get your body accustomed to it. And when you throw that off, your body's like, what the fuck? Like, I need water. Like, give me some fucking water. So if you're if you're not drinking, like, you're just trying to make, like, a habit. Like, all right, at, like, 12 p.m., I'm going to crack open a water bottle. And then at 2 p.m., I'm going to crack open another water bottle. And then at 4 and, like, same thing. So they make, like, water bottles that have, like, different times on the actual bottle tell you when you're supposed to be, like, done with that water. And just, and just little, and, like, I don't know, maybe wake up on Sundays. Like, today's Sunday. Today's meal prep day. I'm going to throw some chicken and slow cooker I'm gonna throw some rice on the stove we're gonna have like chicken and rice for lunch every day so that way like I'm not I'm like at least eating and, and keeping with the schedule I'm getting at least six hours of sleep now and like you stray away from it a little bit but if you get, if you're in the off season and you start sleeping 12 hours a day and you're just gonna your body's gonna be like oh shit it's midnight time to go to bed till fucking noon and then you, th you throw yourself all out of whack so if you just get a thing no matter how hard it is like just get a schedule going with diet with, with drinking water and i mean you don't have to go to like the gym or anything like that it doesn't diet's like a big part of just like feeling better every day and just getting that shit out of your system flush that out and um yeah just schedule just make shit consistent everything flows better when you have a schedule i know that like when i get home from work and i sit down i'm fucking tired immediately because my body knows like all right you're done for the day like you don't have to push any longer and like if i have to work a 10-hour day right at that eight hour point, my body's like, fuck, what are you doing? It's time to go home because it's on schedule. And I, I know people do shit like they wake up at 6 a.m. every day without an alarm anymore because their body's on schedule for it. So I'm breaking stuff like that's insanely difficult. 
so like you were saying kind of waking up doing the same thing every day you know your body gets into that natural circadian rhythm and you know a lot of gamers really throw that off and i don't know if you guys really know what circadian rhythm is but what are some ways that your guys' schedules have really just 180'd in ways that you didn't usually think would be so like you know something that you think you would constantly be doing during the regular season but you know you just don't do when you're competing that you don't see why some things that just kind of slip through the cracks uh i can go first i guess um i mean for me it's definitely my sleep schedule and eating schedule um like coming from the cross and especially like just getting back in modern warfare that really got sparked by the whole coronavirus thing um otherwise i don't think i'd still have the drive to compete at the moment um but you're talking about going from waking up at five going to school having a three-hour practice going home getting your lift in and by then it's nine, so you're doing homework for maybe an hour tops, and then you're going to bed and waking up, and you're doing that every day except for Saturday, Sunday. Um, and then COVID happens, and I think I got as bad as, like it took me until literally yesterday or two days ago, like I was going to bed at four in the morning and waking up at like seven because my brain was still trained to wake up that early. And because of COD, it was also just trained like, hey, you're going to have these – short nights and you're going to wake up and you still got to go to school and do all this stuff except that I don't have school. And so I think now, cause I just started classes this week, it's helped me a lot because, um, now I'm waking up at four. I do my lift before classes. I do classes. My afternoon's all free. So I might take a nap, like a two hour nap, but then I'm going to bed at like eight or nine at night instead of four in the morning and waking up. Um, and I already, it's only been two, three nights, and I already feel way better than I did in season. So, uh, for me personally, when I was younger, a lot, um, not so much now, but for now, it's a little bit different because of COVID. But, um, when I was younger, a lot of times when I was in school or like in high school, middle school, whatever it was, um, when the off season came around, it was weird because I, I you know, I'd wake up and immediately go to my setup and I'd be at my setup the whole day because. Um, I, you know, I didn't do a lot of socializing when I was younger and when I was sitting down, like just playing Call of Duty all days, there was days where, you know, I wouldn't eat breakfast, I wouldn't eat lunch and then I'd, you know, I'd eat dinner and, that, and that's it. Um, it wouldn't happen so much during school cause I had like structure to my day. So, um, I never, like when I was younger, now it's different, but I never really was the one to eat breakfast, but I, at least I had that lunch and I, and I had that like snack in the morning. Um, you know, at least it was something, but you know, when I was younger, definitely, when the off season came around, it was, you know, it was a mess. It was like basically like one meal a day because you know I woke up later and I was just you know we can all attest this. You get so glued to your screen, you get so absorbed in what you're doing. You just you know you kind of forget. Um, but then right after you you know you stop doing it, it's like that. It's just all kind of floods to you. you start getting hungry. You're like crap. You know I need to eat. Um, for now though, like currently uh, with COVID, um, I've like. Recently, like uh, the past few years, you know, I've been good with like keeping my sleep schedule and eating in check. But for me, it's um, since I don't have, you know, that structure of me being able to go to like the gym or school, it's all kind of like one big mess. I kind of do things sporadically. I still get it done, but I don't get it done in an order at which I'm comfortable with because um, I would like to get it done earlier in the day. So I feel like I have more time. But um, because of COVID, you know, I don't have access to a gym or at least a basketball court or you know, like, you know, the smaller stuff that we all used to be able to do. And school got canceled early. So it's like, you know, I kind of had to figure everything out for myself. Um, yeah. For me competing, it was the uh, the loss of sense of urgency. It was like, uh, like at least like when I was getting, when you know, you're competing, you're like, all right, I got to get on at 3 o'clock with the team, like, or else they're all going to be pissed. Or like, I have to watch streams tonight because I need to get better. I have to rewatch my VODs, but... In the off season, you don't have a like if you don't get on that day, like your team's probably gonna be like, oh, it doesn't matter, like we're not playing for anything anyway. So like that, like sense of seriousness and urgency goes away, and then your time frees up because you're not screwing for eight hours and then watching streams for two. Like you're not watching streams at all anymore because you're not trying to learn anything. So trying to fill those time slots is it was the hardest thing. Like I just I would, I would stream 
or just play other games, but like my sleep pick up a little bit more. And, um, I'd be like, all right, time to go to the gym again. I'd go to the gym for like two months, and then COD was starting to be like, I gotta cut that shit out, which wasn't great either, because then all of a sudden I was doing great. Uh, I went back down to fucking train because I'm, I'm like, I don't have time to go to the gym anymore. I need to play COD. But so just like that sense of urgency just sucked when like you you let stuff slip a little bit because there's no repercussions. There's no sense of of fear of like what what's gonna happen if you miss this. Like, yeah, same thing with work and school. Like you're always gonna be like, I gotta get up for work, like no matter what. But like if you don't have work that day, you can, you can snooze that along a couple times, and then before you know it, it's like an hour or two after you're supposed to get up, and it's just how the brain actually works. Like if there's no motive of of like consequence behind it, you're not gonna you're not gonna do it. So keeping that, is, and it's just a difference of like motivation versus discipline too. Like motivation comes and goes, but you always have to stay disciplined. Yeah, there's a big misconception about motivation, I feel, especially in the COD community. You know, a lot of people deal with a lot of mental health issues. You know, I know personally I've gone through some stuff, especially with this COVID thing. I know it's gotten a lot of people into a deep slump. And one of the biggest things I can suggest to people is that motivation doesn't come when you're just sitting there and you're like, you know, you look at your wall and you're like, you know, I feel like I'm going to get up. Like the dopamine releases that you get build up after time and that's what helps motivate you dopamine isn't the happy drug it's the motivation drug that your body chemically you know produces so you have to take action to feel the desire to want to take more action so like we were saying earlier you got to have someone to as soon as you wake up that's going to be holding you accountable and you almost feel bad for not going into that group chat and being like yo good morning boys like let's go get this shit done like you know it's so easy to fall off track and keeping those people around you is really important. So I feel like a lot of us really need to take that into consideration that we got to keep the people around us to motivate us. And, and if it's not just ourselves, you know, it's a, it's a hard time to find that, especially in the off season, you know, you're usually alone and there's not much to do. So you kind of got to keep your connections like we were saying and really keep your circle closed to keep doing shit because, you know, it's going to be hard to get up and actually do something. I mean, I got the nickname Remotional back in the day because I had so much anxiety. And I was, go- I was like in like the worst relationship ever that I would just get on and be like mopey. And, and like, we're like, I don't want to get on tonight because I'm like, kind of sad. Like, so-and-so did this. And it was just, I mean, it's just like uh, like immaturity of not like realizing what the fuck was going on and having like a, like a hindsight view on stuff or like nobody else was doing that shit. So I didn't realize how detrimental it was. But just discipline of like, just looking at the clock, I mean, like, all right, it's 8.50 right now at 9 o'clock. I'm going to get out of my chair. I'm going to do some shit and, and just, uh, like, write shit down so that you can have shit to cross off and feel a little better about that that way. But and just, yeah, discipline is, is is the mindset to have, not motivation, because that won't always be there for discipline, Will. You can always tap into, like, discipline. You can always work on discipline. You can't even work on motivation. Like, you don't know how motivated you're going to be today. Like, even when you're motivated, it might only take you so far. And, if you put discipline with motivation and you fucking skyrocket one day and you got like eight hours of work done and, and like your motivation starting to fall, but then you put discipline with it too. And now you got 10 hours, puts you two hours ahead while that other fucking dude sleeping and you're not sleeping now. Now you're, now you're on the, you're on the flip side. Like. That's honestly a perfect point to kind of end off with. I think you really shed a lot of light into really the ins and outs of competing as a player you know, I personally didn't realize that a lot of the stuff that you went through, especially what you're talking about off cam. You know, I, I wish you could have talked about that on here, but I don't <laughs> care you out like that. So um, sure. it, it was really great having you on. And like I said, getting that insight. So is there anything that you really want to leave with this platform? Anyone that's watching the one big thing that they should take away from this? Be happy. Do what makes you happy and make sure you don't live with any regrets from this shit because um, anything that you do, whether it's COD or not, is going to take sacrifices and, and just just make make balance, make make time for people and um, and everything like that. Like, uh, I mean, like there's certain shit that's always going to be there and there's certain shit that's not always going to be there. Like I always told myself, like growing up, I played a lot of instruments, I played like guitar and drums and shit. And I like neglect practicing that because I was like, you know, like instruments are always going to be there for the rest of my life. But, like holidays right now, so like I, I would put like the necessary stuff to the side because I knew that I can come back to that. But, like I knew I couldn't come back to COD, so I was very happy that I took 
the extra two hours a day maybe that I'd be like fucking around making music to play Call of Duty because now I can make music all day. I don't play that anymore. But um, just making sure that you don't look back at this like it was a waste of time because even though I competed for four years and I didn't make any money from it or I wasn't the biggest streamer, I still like I made a ton of friends. I traveled to a lot of dope places in my years of 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. And um, like I just the experiences were there and I didn't like really regret anything. So that's my biggest thing. It's just don't, don't lose sight of important shit and go pro. Like <laughs> just see if you can fucking do it. I don't know. Don't, don't stop. Don't, don't quit my shit guitar either. Like, uh, this just separates you from the rest, the best from the rest. Right. Hey man, thank you so much for coming on. Anything that Liam or Cole, you do want to say to Remo before we end this? Uh, I mean, I, I didn't know you well before this, but no, but seriously, you are definitely a smart guy with a lot of insightful stuff to say, so I appreciate you coming on, man. appreciate you guys having me. I love podcasts, so we'll do this. I just want to say, thanks for dealing with me for the past four years. <laughs> I've, been, I've been spoon feeding this, dog, this dude all this information slowly, and he's just been like, yeah, I don't really feel like playing this entire year of Black Ops like, 4, and I'm like, all right, dog, like, as long as you're happy, I guess, but don't. I am not. I'm not sure if you guys saw my tweet, but I was like, can't wait to sit here for two hours and listen to Marco say the same <laughs> things I've been hearing for the past four years. Yeah. No, it's just it's never changed. Yeah, it's and it's it's neat because I always I always text them after like a month of like not talking to them. Something will pop up. And like, for example, Nate shot on the uh, Logan Paul podcast was talking about networking. He was like, that's the best. Way, like, that's your best chance of going pro. And I text him, Mark. I was like, dude. <laughs> networking and he's like yeah networking it's almost like i told you that when you're fucking 14 yeah, years and, ago um, don't change but no to anybody listening right now like whatever he said like take it to heart because i remo said don't have regrets and i have regrets of not listening to that shit earlier um especially the motivation versus discipline part uh i know we had like a full conversation about that i don't remember what happened but like one day, like when I first got back in MW, I was like, I'm like really motivated. Like, this is it. Like, I'm going to stick it out. He was like, you've quit this game six times in like three months. Like, what's different this time? I was like, I don't know, dude. I'm just really motivated. He was like, well, you get, he was like, being motivated isn't the right mindset. He was like, it's not, oh, I like, it's not, oh, I really, really want it. It's I really want it. So I'm going to do these things to go get it. Yeah. Perfect point, man. Everybody listen to this. Get off your ass and go get it. And also, I'm I'm a regress part too. Like, I have a lot of regress from from gaming. Like, uh, like I didn't make the right team decisions and shit like that. Like, that's just going to be natural because anything you do in life, you're going to have a better outlook later. So don't beat yourself up about that. But it's just, it's just, shit changes and you grow and mature and and your mindset matures with you and, and outlooks change and shit. So, don't worry about like making the wrong decisions because that's the only way you really learn. But do worry about like time's the most valuable thing we all have. Like you can't you can't make more time or work and make more time shit like that. So like make sure that shit's in check. Make sure make sure you're not fucking sleeping twelve hours a day and playing COD twelve hours a day and sleeping twelve because it just blows by fast. I'm twenty three, and and I remember when this dude was fourteen and I was telling him all this shit and I didn't think about it back then. But now I'm like, fuck, it goes so fast. So it's so, no. Now he's 23 and I'm 18 and I haven't done any of that shit yet. So. You got time. I mean, hey, just... man, what's important is that you know it now. So now you can actually do yeah. it. And I think it's a part of what his whole like mature and over time thing is. I think as a 14 year old, you're kind of like, oh, yeah, I got four years before I have a chance to like go pro. And then you're 15. You're like, I'm 15. Like, it's whatever. Like, maybe go to a few locals. 16 you're like all right it's coming up and then 17 hits and i was just like dude like i don't want to play cod anymore and then 18 comes it's like holy shit i can finally compete but it's like i hadn't taken those steps and i like lamb i know you can associate with like the not networking thing probably because especially when you stepped away from cod for a bit like you said like you lost a bunch of followers who were a part of the cod community which um even if those are kids you didn't talk to, like for all you know, those could have been future pros that would have had you on their fall and you were popping up on their timeline. So, yeah. Yeah, man, I hope everyone listening and each one of you has a great rest of your day. 
like I said, a lot of very, very insightful stuff in this podcast coming out of my man's Remo. I hope you guys go follow him on Twitter. All of it, the ads are obviously on screen. Everyone, stay safe. It's a cold world out there. Peace. Peace.